Good evening, everyone. Time for another silver update. Now, this is the US 30 interactive chart. This is from UKinvesting.com. And I really like this chart. I just discovered this recently with a recent downturn. Let's uh, maximize it. And the reason I like it is because it has the futures live. Now, it doesn't have that 15,000 mark, although I saw it in real time. Um, but it does have futures trading, and that's really important. So it runs through the night, and it gives you the Dow futures. Normally, the Dow futures don't really move that much, but you can see with this uh, big smackdown, they've moved a lot. Big thing on this chart you want to keep in mind are the gaps. You can see there's gap down, gap down, uh, gap down again, and then uh, uh, recovery phase, and the gap up. Uh, and then very importantly, a filling of the gap. And now you can see we're trying to break out of this kind of flag or pennant formation. So let's go to one of the Dania charts. And uh, this chart here is the cross of the Nikkei and the Dow. And I wanted to concentrate on the Nikkei because it's, uh, I'm going to call this Harikari because uh, the action in, in the Nikkei since the top that was made all the way in 1990 is indicative of what can happen. It's not necessarily what will happen, but it can happen. And it's very important to look at what can happen because what, what happened there could happen here. So you can see that uh, comparing these two, the Dow is definitely still, this is this trend line here, is still in a huge, huge uptrend um, for, from 1995, even before that, all the way to where we are here. And this move is just a tiny uh, move. Whereas the Nikkei uh, topped around... Um, 40,000 back in 1990 and uh, had a rally with the devaluing of the yen but uh, is still falling now with the recent action. So you can see the Nikkei is around 18,000. Now really when you do an inflation adjustment from that top back in 1990 we're talking about uh, about a 50 percent loss for inflation adjusted. So, you know, we're going to be down around 9,000. So we're talking about uh, a bear market of a 75% loss for 25 years. So that's what can happen. And that definitely can happen here. So this chart here is the Dow um, on NetDania. And the big issue is going to be whether what we're seeing right now and I definitely got this one wrong so I need to eat some crow on this I did not think this bounce would happen until we got down to 14,000 but you can see we've got a big bounce this is on the weekly we're gonna look at the weekly first then we'll go to the daily uh, but the two things you want to look at here are the correction that happened in uh, the financial crisis in 2008 you can see that was the one where we got this breakdown here. You can see the MACD breakdown. And then the other one here is this uh, 2011 breakdown, and that's this one right here. So the big question is, is this breakdown like the one we have here, or is it like the one we have here? Now, if it's the one like the one we had in 2011, then it's just gonna rally straight up from here. And you can see it's almost down to the number that it was down to uh, in 2011. So it's quite possible that we could get a rally from here. I still don't think so. I think that we're probably going to turn around and go down. Now, if we go into a closer chart here, you can see the dramatic action. Uh, we'll zoom in here to see let me pull the uh, arrow chart off here. So we'll zoom in to see how crazy the action was. And uh, you can see some strange stuff here. Um, the 
dot 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 lines that we see here in these um, that's intervention in the market uh, so we know someone's intervening in the market we don't know who it is but uh, someone's intervening so let's take a look at the interest rate chart of the Nikkei uh, this is a long-term view of Japanese interest rates and you can see actually uh, if you remember back in the 70s um, starting in the late 60s and the early 70s you had Japan coming online and becoming a, a world power if you remember anecdotally uh, there was a time when real estate for the city of Tokyo was worth more than all the real estate in the US at, at one point and you can see though that uh, starting in about uh, the 19 mid 1970s and then uh, really dramatically uh, dropping in the starting at that bear market in 1990 the interest rate in Japan went down to zero and it really hit zero before the year 2000 and you can see that Japan has basically been pegged at zero for at least 15 years now and has been in a downtrend for 30 years so it's quite possible that uh, you can get a bear market and that bear market just never ends now that's really important because uh, investor sentiment you've seen the in investor sentiment curve where you have the up and down and up and down where you get um, bearishness and then bullishness but it's also quite possible for an economy to simply die and uh, of course that's from the government intervening in the markets and not letting markets clear now I've covered Venezuela many many times and uh, Venezuela is just getting worse and worse and worse and this is what you see when you have extreme government intervention um, I've covered it so many times this madman this Maduro this bus driver from Venezuela who's a Jesuit he's a Catholic socialist and uh, the the crisis now that we're seeing is the border uh, between Colombia and Venezuela and that's going to be on if you look at the map that's on the left hand side on the right hand side of course you have uh, Guyana and uh, this crazy Maduro is trying to create a border dispute with uh, the neighboring country on uh, one side and of course with Colombia on the other side uh, so but we're getting to the point now where socialism is reaching its final stages where we're having food shortages and of course um, what's going on on the Colombian border is that they have these um, socialized or subsidized food markets in Venezuela and markets for other things that are set at state prices of course um, it's below the value of what a, uh, a free market would set the rate at so obviously there's an incentive for people who are starving on the border to buy those things if they can bear to wait in line long enough in the long lines to buy what they need and then buy extra and then take that across the border to Colombia and sell it and make a profit uh, this is something that governments can never stop and uh, this probably will come to the United States at some point but uh, you can never stop a black market because this is just people trying to survive so but this is what Venezuela is doing now on its uh, Colombian border uh, you can see here Venezuela hours after they looted and set fire to a National Guard command post in this sun-baked corner of Venezuela earlier this month a mob of infuriated um, a mob infuriated by worsening food shortages rammed trucks into the smoldering edifice reducing it mostly to rubble the incident was just one of numerous violent clashes that have flared in pockets around the country in recent weeks 
as Venezuelans wait for hours in long supermarket lines for basics like milk and rice. So when you have a government that promises everybody something for nothing, basically, and they force the producers of these things uh, to sell their goods for below um, clearing cost, for below uh, what they can make a profit at, then, of course, the few that are left uh, sell them, but they ration them. That's why you have long lines. And then, of course, the ones who get anything extra are going to try to take them across the border, sell them for a profit, and uh, that's what happens. So we're looking at a food shortage now in Venezuela. And uh, so this is going to be the end of the line because when you reach the point of a socialist dictatorship where you have food shortages, if you don't have a military that's strong enough, and you can see the military was overrun by um, looters, basically, then uh, that's where you're looking at the collapse of your, your country. Now, it would be very good for the Venezuelan people if uh, this madman, this uh, Maduro bus driver, is overthrown. I can't say that that's going to happen, but uh, let's go and look at the dollar today. That's the site that you want to look at to see the value of the black market rate for the Venezuelan currency. And you can see that uh, um, it's at 717, which is um, literally 10 to 100 fold from the market rate. You can see there's a picture of Maduro, madman Maduro, behind bars. So um, that's the kind of thing when you have these eternal interventions in markets. Now, that's what's happened in Japan. We know that Japan is now sort of an irrelevant country. It was probably one of the biggest powerhouses in the world um, in the 80s. And then because its government refused to uh, recognize economic reality, it became a basket case. So is that what we're looking at with the U.S. government? Well, it could be. Now, let's go to compare silver prices because we did get, uh, let's pull up the chart here. We did get a very strange new low in the price of silver, uh, kind of a spike down, bounce back sort of thing. Um, you can see here on the 10 minute chart, we got that penetration of that $14 price, and let's uh, pull up the volume here. But then we got uh, some really unprecedented and uh, radical volume in silver. Uh, really unprecedented except for this spike here, and then we went lower. So as soon as we got that dip below $14, where we actually traded in the 13s, uh, we had that massive volume. Now, the big question, of course, is not going to be whether it uh, traded that on the paper ticker, but uh, is the price reflected in the real market? Well, the answer is going to be no. So, if you remember the last few updates I did where I checked compare silver prices, you can see our 90% uh, bag here. Our best price now is 40%. So as I pointed out last time, we're at that point where it doesn't really matter how low they take the price. Uh, the premiums just inflate to make up the difference. A 40%, 41% premium on junk bags is now the best price we can get. And uh, interesting that we have an X for Atmex, we have an X for Kitco, uh, we have a 57% eBay premium, uh, we have a 50% uh, premium there, 
Provident is doing a 44% premium. Jan Bullion is at a 43% premium. And again, Silver.com is a 41% premium. So it doesn't really matter where the price goes. We're now at a point where whatever amount the price goes lower, the premiums go higher. Now, that was a point we had in the past for those of you who weren't trading physical silver back at the time. And uh, you can see these ridiculous volume amounts. We'll go ahead and clear those out. But back in the day, uh, starting in 2008, that was when we started to get this $16 lock on physical silver. And let's go ahead and add that line. So at about $16 or so, back in here, when we had the first Bear Stearns crisis, which led into the uh, financial crisis, we got this lock on Silver Eagles. So it, as the price declined here, the premiums just expanded. Uh, the price of Silver Eagles never really declined below that $16 mark. Now, when it went up, uh, the premiums compressed and they actually stayed uh, close dollar-wise, but they compressed extremely uh, percentage-wise. And then as the price fell, they started to expand dollar-wise and uh, the, the premium made up percentage-wise. So we're back in the same situation we were before. We've got a... Uh, Silver Eagle price right about there at about 1850, and uh, it's just not responding. So that's what you get when the, the powers that be have pushed things too far. Now the big question is: Is the U.S. going to follow Japan into this type of doom scenario? I certainly hope not, but I don't know. Uh, it's quite possible, and. Uh, that's why I'm calling this Harikari because Japan literally has committed suicide uh, for the banksters. And the question is going to be, will the United States commit economic suicide uh, for the benefit of the banksters? And uh, will the U.S. stock market ultimately just start to go down and then continue going down? And if this uh, is, if the precedent set by the Japanese stock market uh, is is followed here, then this is the time frame we're going to be looking at. We're going to be talking about 25 years. That's the time frame. That's going to take us back to 1990, and that means we're going to have return to prices right about back in here and uh, things will just go nowhere forever. That's the kind of thing you get when you have uh, governments who won't refuse or refuse to admit that they're wrong. They won't admit that what they've done is uh, hurting the economy. They just do the same thing over and over again. They set interest rates at zero. They leave them at zero and they just continue to print money and the people suffer. Will that happen here? I certainly hope not. But uh, if uh, we do anything like Japan has done, then uh, it's going to be suicide. And we'll talk to you next time.